Well, in this lesson, we'll be creating this easy manga-inspired drawing. But before we start, if you love art, then you might like to have a look at some of the other lessons at our website at www.montmart.net. We also have links to our Facebook and Instagram pages, as well as to our art club, The Creative Connection. using the 300 GSM watercolour paper and although it's specifically designed for watercolour it's brilliant to draw on and also be using a 2B pencil and an electric eraser. These are cherished by comic book artists and animators. We've supplied a finished outline as well as a page that describes the head shape. Three types of stylized hair and eyes. These can be downloaded as a PDF from our website just follow the above link. The first step is to lay in the construction lines and to build up the correct shape for the head. This is the standard animation practice of creating a circle for the head and a convex triangle that joins to the circle for the jaw and face. Hold the pencil lightly and keep the strokes free flowing when doing this. Next create a centre line. Follow the basic contour of the face and ensure it is in the correct position so as to convey the correct aspect of the head. For example, due to this being a three-quarter view, the centre line is to the left. Next, add the eye lines. They are quite wide as eyes are usually portrayed enlarged in manga and anime. The eyes are what gives the manga and anime its distinct style. Once all that construction line work is in, you can define it. Place in the nose and mouth positioning and lay them in. Keep the line work relatively light, it's just easier to remove if you put a line in the wrong position. Watercolour paper is very resilient to damage from erasing as well, which is good. You can then lay in the eyes. This PDF is printed out to A3 size, but would work just as well if printed to A4 sizing too, by the way. I will also say that the paper from the watercolour pad offers a medium texture on the front side and a smooth surface on the back side. Because it's professional grade watercolour stock, it also has a sized surface. Size is a non-visible coating over the stock that limits the paper's absorption. Once all the basic elements are laid in, you can use an electric eraser to remove the construction lines. I use a goat hair brush to remove any rubbings. Now the construction lines are gone, the next stage is to redefine the existing line work. Any changes and adjustments can also be made. The other thing to mention is to endeavour to keep a sharp tip on the pencil and remember not to overly darken any areas where there will be information laid over it. There is literally thousands of ways to lay hair in in a manga style. Some very simple like the UGO style treatment and some very meticulous like Sinichi Sakamoto style where each hair is suggested through line and highlight. Regardless of what style you choose to do, the basic mass, clumps and form need to be laid in first, and these are called ribbons. From there, you can add information and redefine. Play close attention to the way the hair would fall, and at the point at where it begins. The hair tends to be quite exaggerated too, and real movement is conveyed. I'm trying to create a sort of messy style tied up loosely in two buns and adorned with two roses. I also like the challenge of drawing hair and generally do it a different way each sketch I do. One reason why manga style art is so accessible to people is that it's fairly formulated. So one can learn how to draw a head shape and a nose type, learn a type of eye that they like mix them all together and draw up something that they are proud of. Manga art is also heavily stylized with an economy of line in mind. A nose can be suggested with a crooked line, lips can be a simple three lines, and patterns, shapes and contrast are also just as important as realistic depiction. So once I have all my ribbons roughly laid in, I can draw in the roses. Again, they're just stylized. I lay in the perimeter and fill it in with a series of random acute shapes to suggest the petals. The thing to bear in mind is to create them so they sit in a circular fashion as they move toward the middle, getting smaller all the time. Incidentally, we have a number of tutorials on creating roses at our website. 
from a simple rose in oil pastel to a rose painted in oil in the Flemish style. Anyway, they're a pretty fun flower to draw and paint and they certainly work in this drawing. The leaves are pretty simple. You just have to lightly lay in the basic shape before you add the edges in. Put a slight curve on them also. It's subtle little things like this that create interest. You can then draw in the edges which are slightly serrated. I then take out that wonderful eraser again and remove any of that underlying line work for the hair. It may seem like overwork to remove the line work after drawing the flower instead of drawing the flower first. But it's harder to get the hair line work to sit convincingly I think. Anyway, after all that's removed you can redefine it all and lay in the veins on each leaf. I then draw in the hair tussled into buns behind her head and lay in the light line work that suggests a mass of hair. As a kid I read comics incessantly. They were a great inspiration for me. I really liked Astro Boy and Robotech. Obviously comics are a good resource to pull ideas from. The next stage is to define the hair. If you want you can just delineate the main ribbons or you can create a patterned illustrative look like this. eyes lightly shade the iris area. Create a semicircle three quarters of the way down the eye and shade above this. Draw in the pupil and remove the tone with the electric eraser to suggest light highlights. I then finish off the ear and shade in all those folds. As a little addition we've added the extra step of applying colour. We're using the Montmartre 18 piece watercolour half pan set. This set provides a water brush and a natural sea sponge as well and it's small and compact enough for you to pop in your bag and take with you for art jams at friends places and school. Thanks for watching, we hope you're inspired to try something like this and hope you've at least picked up a few tips. Remember you can download the PDF by following the link above or by clicking the downloads tab beneath the lesson in the TV category at our website. You might also like to join our art club, The Creative Connection, if you haven't already. If you do decide to create your own version of this, you can share it or any other of your creative projects on social media using hashtag MontmartreArt. We look forward to your creations and we'll see you next time.